Um, so guys, let's begin with the reading test. Um, uh, now, of course, the reading test can be quite challenging. It's, it's quite a high level uh, test. However, there are some things that we can do um, to uh, help us perform better. Um, I'm going to speak at this uh, speed during the workshop. I hope that's okay for you. Um, also some listening practice for you. Um, if you miss something or if you don't hear something, make a note um, and um, ask me uh, at the end if you weren't clear about something, okay? And I will help you. Um, so let's take a look here. What will we check in the workshop? Well, the first 45 minutes of One Will Put will be the reading test. We'll look at some uh, different question types, um, some problems with each of these question types and some tips and strategies. Then some general uh, advice, uh, Louis Quinn, about before you take the test, during the test, and some common uh, mistakes we have. Uh, then we'll have some final tips and uh, uh, maybe some questions about the reading test uh, first, okay? Now, of course, we have a lot of different question types uh, in the reading test, about 10 or 11 types. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to examine uh, five uh, question types here uh, today. These are not only the most common question types, but also the types of questions people have uh, some problems with uh, in the test. Okay, so the first thing we'll look at are um, matching headings to paragraphs. Now, as you know, this is a very, very common question. Um, it's um, please, uh, it says select the correct heading for each of the paragraphs. Now, the usual problems, Vendebing uh, Tung, the normal problems here are there's a lot of information, not a lot of time, and sometimes um, candidates try to match words from the headings to words in the paragraph, um, exactly. And sometimes um, candidates also don't uh, skim enough of the paragraph or they spend too much time on one paragraph or uh, one heading. Now, here are some tips for this question. My advice is to always do this question type first, okay? Um, the reason for that is um, the, when you do this question type first, it will give you a good general idea of the passage. So passage one, two, or three. Um, so always try this question first and you will have a good picture of the passage, which will help you later um, to uh, find the answers for other question types. Now, remember, in the reading test, and this is a very important thing, you won't understand every word. Um, in the academic test, uh, the passages are from academic places, so they're quite complex, and there will be some words you don't know. Come, Kazi, okay? No big deal, no problem. Um, Always remember in the reading test and the listening, there is a lot of paraphrasing and synonyms, okay? Um, and with all of these questions, if you're not sure, then you should move on and return later. Um, can you tell me in the, in the chat box, guys, how many questions do we have in the reading test? Baunyo Kohoi. 40. Very good. Thank you, guys. So, and how many minutes do we have in the reading test? Correct. 60 minutes. Thank you very much, guys. So, how, yeah, 20 minutes per passage, uh, Zhang. So, how many minutes do we have per question for each question? So, we have 60 minutes, 40 questions. How many minutes per question? Sound me food? 
Bốn mẹ câu hỏi. Đúng rồi. Who is good at math? Okay, correct. We have per question, một phút rưỡi, one minute, 30 seconds. So, if you're not sure about an answer, okay, it's just one point. Move on and return later. Okay, don't spend too much time. So do this type of question first. How do we do this question? Well, my usual method that I teach to my students are is this. For each passage, one, two, and three, we always skim the passage for one minute before we do any questions. This gives us uh, an idea of the topic. What is the topic? Okay, then we look at the headings and we underline the keywords. Then we go to the first paragraph, paragraph one, paragraph A. We um, read the first one or two sentences and the last sentence. Okay, now if the paragraph is very short, then just the first and last sentence is okay. If the paragraph is longer, Read the first two sentences and the last. Now, you don't need to know every word. Remember, you're just quickly reading. Then check your headings. Is there a match for paragraph one? If there is, the quantum, swa, cross it out, okay? If you find a match, always cross it out. This will help you to focus for paragraph two. Paragraph three, this will help you to focus on the options that you still have. If you can't find a match, okay, continue, continue to paragraph two and repeat this uh, process. Okay, now when you practice, you should practice using this process or your method. Okay, practice makes perfect. Okay, so that's matching headings to paragraphs. Now, another uh, type of difficult question is matching information to paragraphs. So that question is, which paragraph contains the following information? Now, this one is, is pretty difficult, okay? However, there are some um, things we can do to help us, okay? What are the problems? Well. It takes a lot of time. Unlike the matching headings, it might not be the main idea of the paragraph. So there's a lot of useless information we don't need. Not all paragraphs will have an answer. And some paragraphs might have more than one answer. For example, paragraph two might have two answers inside. So how can we um do this type of question better okay i'm telling you well first tip is do this type of question last so let's say you're doing passage two and you have matching headings and matching info do matching headings first do matching information last why well you will already be quen quen, familiar with the passage, and that will help you find the right location, the right area, Yang Han, faster. Okay. Another tip is try to find um, words without synonyms. Okay. Hong Kong synonyms, like names of people, places, numbers organizations, dates, percentages. These can help you uh, quickly scan and find the information. But remember, um, numbers can have synonyms. For example, Vizu, 34% might be in the question, but in the text, it might say just over a third or about a third. And just remember that for the listening too. There might be synonyms for some numbers. Okay, so do this question last. That's my that's my main tip for this matching information. Now, 
true, false, not given. Um, the biggest problem here, usually for me, when I teach, is the difference between false and not given. Okay? It's very important to know the difference between what false is and what not given is. And I will tell you now. Um, but also, just be careful um, with true, false, not given. You must look at the full sentence. Verbs, adverbs uh, are very important here, okay? And adjectives. Um, remember, it might be a paraphrase. So keywords from the question, maybe not in the passage, okay? So be careful with that. So what are true, false, and not given? Well, true means that the text is the same as the statement in the question. So the question and the text have the same information. They match, okay? Um, false means that the information in the question, in the statement, is, is different than in the text, okay? It's not the same as in the text. It's different. It's different information. But there is some connection. There is some information in the text about what's in the question. So you can show that it's different. It's not the same. Not given means you cannot know if the question is correct or not. You cannot find anything in the text that can show if the statement, if the question is correct or not. You come yet do it. Okay. You cannot know. Okay. Um, be a little bit careful here, guys. Okay. Because same and similar are different. Okay. With a fact, it's the same or not the same. Similar is not um, same, okay? Also, um, with not given, maybe there are some words in the text that are in the question, but that's not enough. If you cannot know, then you cannot know if it's right or wrong. So it must be not given, okay? Now, I know this is confusing, okay? It is a little confusing. So um, let's look at a little bit more information here. Um, some words can change the meaning, especially adverbs, okay? Like mainly, always, occasionally, often. Take a look at these two sentences. Coca-Cola, or Coca, as we say in Vietnam, has always made its drinks in the USA. Coca-Cola has mainly made its drinks in the USA. Those two adverbs, always and mainly, totally change the meaning of the sentence. Okay? Yeah? Okay? They change the meaning. So be careful when you see uh, adverbs like that. Also, when you see verbs that are similar but different, be careful, okay? Take a look at this example. The man claimed he was a British citizen. That means the man said, that annoy, okay? He was uh, British. The man is a British citizen. One is a fact, so that, okay, the man is, that is a fact. The man claimed that's his opinion, okay? So be careful with the verbs and the adverbs in the true, false, not given, okay? Um, also, guys, a big tip here and something um, a lot of people don't know is that 
there will always be at least one answer true, one answer false, one answer not given. So if you have three questions, let's say question 12, 13, 14, and you answer true, true, false, that means one of your, at least one of your answers is wrong. Okay, there will be at least one answer true, one answer false, one answer not given. Okay, let's look at some examples. Oh, not yet. Okay, some more tips. I have some examples here, guys, but not yet. Two, two. Okay, um, some more tips about this. If you have searched and you can't find the information in the statement, don't spend too much time on one question. If you're not sure, if you really can't find, then you should guess not given. Because you probably can't find any information because there is no information. Okay? So not given is a good guess in this uh, situation. Okay? Now, like I said, guys, if you have questions about any of this reading, you can write them in uh, Q&A and I will answer at the end of the reading workshop, okay? Um, remember, the answers are in the same order as the text, okay? Now, why is this important? Well, think about it. Usually, the answers for uh, the questions will be in two or three paragraphs beside, beside each other. So, when you look at your questions first, you underline your keywords in the question. Look for names, places, dates, numbers, scientific words like chemicals, like oxygen or CO2, carbon dioxide. Why? Because they have no synonyms. If you have question 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, Five questions, true, false, not given. And you see question 14 has the word oxygen or the word um, Dublin or London or Hanoi. Then you can find that in the text quickly by scanning. Then you know question 12 and 13 are before that and question 15 and 16 are after. So guys, yes, the reading test is difficult. Yes, it's a lot of vocab, but you can use logic. You can use your logic to help you perform better, okay? Now, just be careful with yes, no, not given. Uh, when you write your answer, always write yes, not true, yes. Also, guys, don't write T-F-N-G, write true false, not given. Very clear, okay? Um, yes, no, not given are similar, but a little bit different. They talk about the quandium, the opinion of the writer, okay? And remember, like all questions, you are matching the meaning, not keywords, okay? So let's take a look at an example. Um, I want you to read this example, guys, and here's our question, and I want you to write true, false, or not given in the chat box. Okay, so take a look at this, and I want you to choose true, false, or not given. Okay, some answers coming in. Don't go too fast. <laughs> okay, some people saying false, some people saying true. Now remember, you don't need to understand every word. Some difficult words here. Perusing, hieroglyph, Posture. These are difficult words, but you don't need to understand all the words. 
Okay, some people saying true, some people saying false. Some people saying not given, one person. Okay, two people saying not given. Okay, guys, well, I can tell you the answer is false or true. The answer is not not given. Okay, I can tell you guys the answer is false. So if you said true, look again. Look again at this. And I don't know if you can see my chuot. Can you see my, my chuot? This is the important part here. While perusing a book on the monuments of Egypt. Very good. So, guys, the answer is false because she did not find it, this thing. We don't need to know this. It means a picture. But she did not find it on a wall. She wasn't at the wall, looking at the wall. She found a hieroglyph in a book. Okay? She found it um, in a book. Okay, she noticed it in a book. She didn't find it. It was in a book and she noticed it. Okay, so that's false. Just be careful. These are a little bit tricky. Okay, next one. So, hi. So, guys, take a look at this. Take your time. Ta -da. Okay. You have, you know, you have multiple, you have a minute and a half for each question. And Tell me in the chat box, is it true, false, or not given? Okay, I think a lot of people, a lot of people ching sack here. Okay, zoi, 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 So, champ and champ, come zoi. Okay, guys, well done. The answer here is not given. Because there is no information about Garib, a person. See, no synonym, easy to find. There is no information about Garib and Tingyep experiments on um, bird flight. We, we don't know. Come yet. Maybe he did or she did. Oh, no, he, it's a man. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. We don't know. Come yet, deal. Okay. Very good. Next one, number three. Now, this one is tricky, okay? This one is tricky. And guys, I'll give you a tip. You don't need this word, but conventional means um, what people think, what people accept. So, for example, pho is a conventional um, meal in Vietnam. It means like a normal um, meal that everybody knows. Or bang mi chung, for example, my favorite. Everybody knows Bang Mi Ting and Pho. Uh, uh. So now this one is tricky, guys. So take your time. This is a little bit tricky. Mm. Okay. Okay. Now, like I said, guys, conventional picture means that what people think is the truth, what people believe. Yeah, the last sentence does make it a little tricky, okay? Now, 
Now, it's, the answer is not not given because there is, oops, there is um, some information about who built the pyramids. So it's the answer is true or false here. Okay, guys, so I can tell you, and this one is hard, that the answer is true. Now, why is it true? Well, because, yeah, there is no evidence that thousands of slaves, thousands of people moved stones to make the pyramids. There's no evidence, but that's what people think happened, okay? That's what people accept is the truth, okay? So sometimes things from history, we don't have evidence, but we believe is the truth, okay? So there's enough information here about a lot of people moving stones to build the pyramids. There's enough information to choose true, okay? Now, guys, just before we uh, move uh, on here, um, just remember these definitions. If the information in the text matches the question, it's true. If the information in the text does not match the question, it's false. If we cannot know, we cannot know because we don't have enough information, then it's not given. Um, one more tip here also, guys. Um, if you, uh, well, I'll give you that tip later, actually. I'll give you that tip later as a question for you. Okay, next type of question, guys. Multiple choice. Okay, multiple choice. So, um, let's look at some common problems with multiple choice. You know, A, B, C, D, choose the correct answer. Um, Sometimes people try to read a large part of the text before they look at the question. No, start with the question, then move to the text. Question first, find the location, and then examine it. Um, also, guys, always take a guess if you're not sure. Now, I know this is very clear or obvious, but some people don't. Take a guess. Always take a guess if you're not sure. Um, be careful with distractors. Like in the listening test, um, there will be some um, keywords or words in the answers that are in the text. But we're not matching words. We are matching meaning. Okay? And also, like true, false, not given, be careful with the um, small words in the sentence, um, like adverbs, adjectives. They can change the meaning. So read the whole sentence, not just part, the whole sentence. Okay? So some tips. Like I said, um, read the questions before you read the text. Look for uh, keywords. Um, underline your keywords and also look for words with no synonyms. That can help you. Okay. And um, like true, false, not given, the answers will be in the same order as the text. Okay. So if you can find some keywords uh, that are names or places or scientific words or years, dates, numbers, these can help you find the location. Um, usually, um, two of the answers will be clearly incorrect, okay? And often there are two answers that are similar. You have to pick between those two. Um, if you're not sure, um, it's often good to rephrase or paraphrase the questions in your words. This can help you to look for um, the, the similar words more easily, okay? Now, if you're running out of time or you're not sure, take a guess, okay? 
you don't need to know anything about the topic in the IELTS test, okay? A lot of candidates say, oh, the text was about um, global environmental problems. I don't know anything about that. Or the text was about um, sport or the science of sport. I don't know anything about that. It doesn't matter, okay? The answers are in the text. You don't need to know anything about the today, right, the topic. Um, also, it can help to try and predict the correct answer, but be careful. The text might be different than your prediction, okay? Um, now, a little question I have for you guys. If you're doing passage three, okay? Now, remember, 20 minutes per passage. Hang my foot per passage. Um, if you're doing uh, passage three and you um, are running out of time, hopefully that won't happen. Remember, guys, time is very important. Even for this workshop, I am watching my time. Okay, control the time. Kim swat dozan, no tankam hun, right? Control the time, more success. But if you, you know, have a bad day, and you don't control your time. And let's say you still have um, a few questions to do in passage three. Which type of question should you do last? True, false, not given, or multiple choice with four options, A, B, C, D? Tell me in the chat box, which type of question should you do last if you don't have enough time? Hopefully this won't happen. Should you do true, false, not given or multiple choice? So some people are saying multiple choice. Some people are saying true, false, not given. Now remember, with true, false, not given, you have three options. With multiple choice, you have four options. Think about it. Think about the one, think about the mathematics. True, false, not given, three options. True, false, not given. Multiple choice, four options, A, B, C, D. Very good. So if, hopefully this won't happen, but if you are running out of time and you need to guess, by the one, you have to guess then I would leave the true, false, not given until the end because there are only three options. So, by my bath and tam, 33% chance to succeed. With multiple choice, mod high baboon, high lamp and tam, 25% uh, chance you will be correct. Okay, now, if there is no true, false, not given, of course, do multiple choice last. But guys, it's very important to control your time. Now, my next question. My next question. Um, of course, we have three passages. Passage one, passage two, passage three. And we have 60 minutes. Okay. So, how many minutes per passage? Tell me in the chat box. In the chat, how many minutes per passage? 60 minutes, three passages, or three texts. Text one, text two, text three. So Lam says 20, Cho says 20, Nguyen says 20, Duk says 20, Daisy Luong 20, Taeang says 20, Zip says 20 minutes. Hmm. Tang says 15. Interesting. Two feet. Depends on the difficulty level. Mm, yeah, good answer there. Lum says 35 minutes. Unfortunately, no. Sang says 25, 25, 10. No, Sang, that's not a good split. Huing says 18, 20, 22. Well, guys, we don't know how may, how difficult each passage will be, okay? So we're saying like chumbing, average. Now, 
It depends. Okay. Well, guys, I can tell you that 20 minutes is close. But wrong. Why? Well, my next question. How many minutes extra time do you get to transfer answers in the reading test? Tem bounty foot nuh. Num doi. Nyan says uh, three. Meng Kang says three. I said how many minutes extra time? Extra, which I think is uh tem nuh. Tem bounty foot nuh. Nop says zero. Vu says one. Well, the answer, guys, is zero. The answer is zero. You do not receive extra time. In the listening test, you get 10 minutes extra after the test. However, in the reading test, you get zero. Okay, so let me write something in the chat box here. 60 minutes, three passages, but you do need about three uh, to five minutes to transfer. Usually people can do it in about three minutes. So guys, actually you only have about 18 to 19 minutes per passage, okay? So just be careful with that. Don't forget you have to transfer the answers, okay? Now some people like to put the answers in while they are doing the questions. That's your choice, okay, your choice. But remember, no more than 18 to 19 minutes per passage, okay? Don't spend 25 minutes on passage one, okay? You will be making more pressure, making more stress. Ap look, kang tang, right? You'll be making more pressure and stress. So. 20 minutes maximum or 18 to 19. Okay, let's look at an example here, guys. Bizu. So here we see a passage and here we see four answers. So take a look at the uh, question and tell me in the chat box what, um, what you think the answer is, okay? A, B, C, or D. So oh, let's see the uh, answers in the chat. Now this one, not too difficult. Okay, zoi, 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 zoi. Lots of answers coming in. So remember guys, we're looking to match meaning, not keywords, we're matching meaning. I don't know the Vietnamese for match. Yeah, is a meaning, right? Or ding, ding, yeah. Maybe someone can teach me. But we're matching uh, meaning, not keywords. So, very good. The answer is C. Now, you don't need to know contaminate, okay? You don't need to know residue, okay? You don't even need to know purchased. You won't know all the words, okay? Ah, someone told me that. Is it Noi? I can't see the the zau, but thank you very much to uh, Daisy Luang. Ah, Luang. Okay, thank you, Luang, uh, for the zik thing uh, Um So, guys, you don't need to know every word. This is a very important thing. You must accept. You must be okay with not knowing all the words and not getting every question right. Very, 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 very few people get um, over 36 or 37, okay? If you get 30, that is 7.0, okay? Which is a very high score. So you can get 10 questions wrong and still get a very high score. Very impressive, is that like until? So, you must be okay and just relax and accept you won't know every word and you um, 
can get some questions wrong. It's okay. Um, now, guys, if you said B, some students said B, you got burns from the hot coffee. There is no information here about burns, okay? Just that you had some hot something on your clothes, right? On your clothes. So the answer is C. All right, guys, so multiple choice. Um, like we said, there's no information about spilling coffee on the floor, nothing about burning, so you must choose between C and D. We don't know contaminate, okay, but we can see clothes, and we're not matching the, 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 the keyword clothes, but we're looking at the sentence. Hot liquid escapes tiny hole, leave you, give you hot something on your clothes. Quite clear. Okay. Um, so guys, just to, before we do summary completion, um, remember with all of these types of questions, these types of questions, there, there is some strategy. There is like logic, logic you can use here. For example, matching headings. Do this question first, follow the method. Matching information, do this question last. Look for um, words without synonyms. True, false, not given. You must know the, what is the difference between false and not given. Also, if you can't find the answer, it's probably not given. Oh, I see a typo here. I say no given. Oh, okay. I must fix that. And with multiple choice, remember, read all of the question. Look for adverbs. Look for adjectives that change the meaning for both of these. Okay, we're not matching keywords. Okay, let's look at uh, the, another type of question, summary completion. So this is when you have um, gaps and you have to um, complete the gaps to um, complete the summary of the text. Okay, um, again, Focus on the summary. The summary is usually summarizing one or two paragraphs in the text. It's usually not summarizing the whole text, okay? Um, remember, uh, like all the questions, the examiners are using synonyms and paraphrasing, okay? It will be a paraphrase. It's a summary. The whole idea of summarizing, like in the writing test, is that you're paraphrasing. Remember the grammar rules when you're summarizing. Some gaps need a noun. Some gaps need a, an adjective. Some gaps need a verb ing. Some gaps need verb past tense. Some gaps need a verb present perfect. Okay. If you have multiple choice, um option for the summary sometimes you will have multiple choice option be very careful because sometimes one or two of the options are matching words from the text don't be fooled okay don't be tricked um you're matching meaning just because the word is in the text does not mean it's the correct answer okay so what tips do we have? Well, when you're looking at the summary, which is the question, when you're looking at the summary, try to predict um, the answer. You know, just think, what would I write in that gap? Okay, very quickly you can predict. Then think, well, what kind of word do I need for the grammar, for the grammar to be correct? Maybe it's a verb, maybe it's a noun, maybe it's an adjective or adverb. Could be maybe an adjective and an adverb. They might both work sometimes. Um, look for the synonyms and paraphrases in the text. Again, the keywords will help you find that, will help you scan. Scanning is a very important skill. You can't read the whole text, guys in the there's not enough time to read the whole text it's about finding the location 
of the answer for all question types. OK, and like I said before, don't spend too much time looking for one answer. If you can't find it, continue. OK, um, sometimes also you can swat, you can delete or remove some options if you have options because they don't work with the grammar. OK, you can remove some options. Um, that don't work with the grammar. So maybe that you have four options. One of them is a noun. But you see that uh, in the summary, it says John wants to mm, the process. John wants to. Mm. That means it's got to be a verb. OK. Or John wants to. Mm, change the process john wants to mm, change that means it must be an adverb Visu. john wants to totally change completely change okay so if you get options think which options can work which options cannot work all right guys uh, so that's just some question types um now I guess I'm a twins. I guess I'm an expert, but there are much bigger experts than than me in the world about uh, the test. Um, so I, I I took some advice from from them, okay, uh, to give to you. Um, before we take the test, so when we're practicing, okay, uh, yeah, Louis and Tup, uh, yeah, right. Um, practice does help. OK, practicing the test will help you. Um, now, I have a tip up here. Where is it? Sorry, one second. Ah, I don't think I included it. So I'll give you an extra tip I haven't included. Um, something very important, guys, is that when you are practicing for the IELTS reading test, don't only um, do IELTS practice tests. OK, um, remember, this test is about vocabulary and reading. OK, yes, you should practice some uh, IELTS practice tests, which are available on the IDP website. OK, um, yes, that is useful, but don't only practice. The best other way to practice is just reading English. OK, reading normal English about sport or the news um, that will really help your reading speed. It will help your vocabulary and it will help your um, ability to take out uh, information. Um, a good um, website for this would be news websites. Uh, so, for example, VN Express. Vietnam News, okay, uh, they all have English language um, websites, okay, I actually work for Baunyanzan myself, um, they all have English language websites, and the topics are often quite relevant to IELTS, environment, science, education, um, current affairs, you know, um, what else do we have? Um, sport, okay? They're often quite relevant topics. So, yes, do practice the reading test and do uh, time yourself. Use your timing, okay? And I'll give you another tip about that later. But also, one time per day, read something interesting. Read something you like, okay? About a new video game, about. Um, you know, a TikTok star, or about, um, I don't know, a, fo a football match or whatever, a basketball player. Read some news, read something interesting. That will really help. And it's less boring. It can, okay, it's less boring. Um, also, um, some tips um, about your study. Um, adverbs, very important. 
as we said before. Also, prefixes like un or pre or dis or mal or miss or mono or by and bicycle. Sometimes you won't know a word, but you can break the word. Okay. Um, for example, um, bicycle. Of course, you know this word. You know that by means what? Tell me in the chat box. What does by? Yes, comics is fine, um, Sang. Comics are fine. It's reading, okay? By. What does by mean, guys? B-I. Bicycle or bisexual or biannual. Very good. By means two. Tri. T-R-I. Like triangle. Triannual. Or trilogy. Lord of the Rings trilogy. Very good. Tri means three. Very good. Bi plus one. Fungang. Okay. So what I mean is sometimes, guys, you don't know the word, um, but you will see a prefix and that might help you. Okay. Maybe you see the word biannual or triannual and you're like, what? But you know annual maybe means one time per year. Mudlan mudnam. Biannual, highlan mudlan mudnam. Triannual, three times. So prefixes are useful. Um, also suffixes like full and less. Of course, less means without. Full means with. Like I said, read from many different sources. Practice your skimming, which is quick read and scanning, looking for detail. And I don't have time for, for this guy here. So we'll go to the next one. Like I said, skimming and scanning are very, very, very important. You must skim each passage before you look at the question. Passage one, passage two, passage three. You should skim. Motfut, one minute. What is skimming? Well, read the title and the subtitle. Sub means below. Subway, submarine, subheading, subtitle. Okay? Um, that's uh, skimming. Always skim for one minute. Scanning, you know, is finding the location. Look for the keywords. Look for the proper nouns. Okay, like the dates, the numbers, the people, the places, the organizations, like United Nations or uh, Communist Party. These things don't have synonyms. There are no synonyms. Okay. Um, sometimes, um, also, if you do the paper test, um, you can follow your, fing uh, your finger or pencil. Also, in the um, computer test, in my thing, you can follow the chuot, okay, the mouse. Like we said before, guys, during the test, the timing is very important. During the test, chomsuot, right? Read the instructions carefully. How many words? Zetla How many words am I allowed for my answer? Three, guys. Try to stay calm, okay? I know it's hard. I know there's a lot of look. I know there's a lot of pressure on you. But when we are not calm, we make bad decisions, okay? So try and chill, okay? Just follow your your method. You you have done enough work, okay? Um, vocabulary is key. You won't understand every word. Don't go over the word limits and don't spend too much time on one question. Okay, take a guess. And maybe you will have time later to come back. Always skim for one minute. Very important. Like I said, some uh, reminders here. Do the matching headings to paragraphs first. Do the paragraph um, matching paragraph to information last. And if you're um, too short on time, do the uh, true false not given or multiple choice last. But you should try and kim swat dezan, try and control your time. Okay. Let's take a quick look at this uh, little video here, guys. Five common mistakes to avoid in the IELTS reading test. Are you struggling to get the score you need in the IELTS reading test? Maybe you're making one of these common mistakes. Mistake number one, trying to read every single word. Sure, it's essential to read the text, but in the time that's available, it's not always possible to read and understand every single word and sentence. Don't worry, 
Your aim should be to skim the text for meaning and then scan it for the answers that you need. Try to understand the main ideas of the article. If you're not sure of a particular word or phrase, just move on. Mistake number two, not understanding the question. In saying that, while you can't take too long when taking the reading test, being slow and steady and taking a little extra time to read the question properly will pay off in the long run. Mistake number three, giving two answers. Don't hedge your bets. Sometimes when people are not certain of the answer, they might try to write in two options. Since there are no half marks in IELTS, it has to be marked as wrong. Don't waste those valuable points. Mistake number four, not transferring everything to the answer sheet. It's a great idea to take note from the question paper as you're reading through the text, but just make sure you remember to transfer all the answers to the answer sheet. The examiner will not see your question paper. Mistake number five, don't assume anything. All of the answers to the IELTS reading questions are found in a text you read. So guys, assume, um, I did know this word in Vietnamese. Is it Cha Zang, maybe? Uh, I can't remember. But assume means that you think you know something before you check. So for example, um, I assume it will rain today. That means I think it will rain, but you know, I don't really know. So don't assume. Maybe someone can give me Vietnamese of that. I think it's Chao Zang. Mistake number five. Don't assume anything. All of the answers to the IELTS reading questions are found in a text you read. Don't assume anything based on your knowledge or experience. For example, if the test question is, smoking is dangerous and can lead to cancer, is this true, false, or not given? So, smoking is dangerous and can lead to cancer. What, what would you guess about this, guys, from what you know in, in your life? Tell me in the chat box, what answer would you guess? Okay, everyone, everyone would guess true. That means we assume true is correct before we check. But if the reference text says no research showed evidence that smoking is dangerous and leads to cancer, then the answer must be false. So if the text says this, make it a, a little bit, okay. So if the text says this, I mean, obviously like we, we don't think this is correct, but that doesn't matter. The text says this, so the answer must be false. So don't assume you know. Then the answer must be false, even if that sounds crazy to you. Finally, experiment to see what works for you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, young lady. Um, so guys, we had uh, most of these tips uh, already, okay? Um, I'm going to move to the uh, listening test uh, shortly. I'll take a few questions about the reading uh, test. So if you have any questions, guys, about the reading test, please put them in the chat box now. I will give you these final tips, and then I will quickly answer your um, questions on the reading test, okay? And then we'll move to the listening test. So we, we had most of these already. You won't understand every word, okay? If you don't understand a word, look at the words near. Look at the words close to it. Also, number two, don't just practice uh, IELTS reading, okay? Practice your reading skill with normal things, normal subjects. Read the instructions very, very carefully. Okay. If a number is written as a word, it is actually still a number. Bizu, 32 cars is one word, cars and a number, 32. If the question asks for two words only and the answer is red and yellow, what should you write? Okay. You should write, well, what do you think? Tell me in the chat. Red, fai. Yellow, very good. One word means only one word, okay? Just one, be careful with that. Don't panic, relax, okay? You won't, probably won't get 40 from 40. That's okay. Remember what I said, you can score uh, 30, which is amazing, get 10 questions wrong and still score seven. Um, vocab, okay, now you guys are doing the test soon. So 
it don't read lists of vocab from books okay read articles read things online if you don't know a word check it write it down in a book and you will remember it okay remember timing you need a uh, transferring time okay remember if you think you know things about the topic that's okay but be careful you might not uh have the same view as the text and this last um tip is quite useful actually um if you're practicing the the test the reading test i think it's good to practice with a little bit more time at the beginning so visa first time you practice take 30 minutes for one text buy my food take your time relax then check your answers check why you were wrong then the second time you practice learn to high with passage two take 20 minutes okay and then learn to back take 16 17 minutes so practice slow and practice fast be careful when transferring your answers of course with the spelling okay be careful with the spelling and leave no empty answers okay guys no empty answers all right let me take a look in the chat here uh, just to check if there are any questions about the reading test only the reading test so far i see one here from um Tuschen. okay Tuschen. do we have to transfer the answers when taking the computer test no when you take the computer test you will answer the um, questions as you um, answer you will write the answers um, as you um, work on the questions you, you do not need to uh, transfer okay oh any more questions on the um, any more questions ah okay just one second guys I'm just going to um, share my screen here okay second I'm back. Okay. Hello, everybody. Um, let's look at the, uh, let's put the listing up first. So, yeah, I see some questions in the Q&A. Thank you, guys. I will get to those uh, now. Okay, so the questions on the reading. It says here, uh, should we skim the, this is from uh, Tuan Hung uh, Levan, should we skim the passage, then do each question following instructions, or read each paragraph and do the questions which relate? Um, Van, always read the question first, then find the location, the uh, Quang, the approximate location, and then um, do the uh, answer. Don't read the text first. Um, Wynne says, should we learn all the new vocabulary in the passage? Um, from the text, when you're practicing, no. Okay, you don't need to know every word. Um, I would say words that are important, that have affected your answer. Yeah, learn those words. But you don't need to know every word. Okay, uh, especially if your test is very soon, like next month. Okay. You don't need to learn lots and lots of new words. Uh, Tian Chang uh, Tian says, is it true if the reading test or listening test is too difficult? The required number of correct answers to get a score will vary. No, that's not true. Um, the, the, the band score system is fixed, okay? They don't vary the scoring. Do you have to do the writing task on paper when you take the IELTS test on the computer? Um, I think that you write it on the computer. Um, the IELTS computer test is taken fully on the computer, apart from the speaking test. Please show us a sample of the answer sheet. Um, you can find that on the IDP website, the answer sheet, or just Google. Take a look at, this is for Ang Luang. Uh, just Google uh, ID, uh, IELTS reading answer sheet. Just Google that, um, Luang. Okay. Nyan, should we apply linear thinking in reading or apply skimming and scanning? Since in IELTS, all the words in the question will be paraphrased. Well, can Nyan, not all the words will be paraphrased. No. Um, skimming and scanning is the best technique with the time you have 
available. Linear uh, thinking, I'm not sure what you mean by that, but you cannot read the entire text, okay? Not all the words will be paraphrased, only some, okay? Only some. Um, there's a lot more questions in here in the Q&A. Okay, I told you the matching headings and information. If you have to smack or twist the croissant. Very nice. I love croissants. Uh, how to do the multiple choice questions in the listening test? Well, that's the listening test, okay? I will discuss that next. Okay. Listening test next. Is it true? Ah, Ang Ding, is it true that for reading and listening answers, candidates can write in full capitals? As I remember in the past, upper or lower case is very important. Um, that's a good question. A, a lot of people do write in full capitals when they transfer answers, to be clear. Um, it's probably a good idea. Um, however, if you're completing the summary completion, you should not use Viet Hoa in uh, the, the middle of a sentence, unless it's a name of a place or a person. Okay, so be careful. Um, when you're transferring answers, um, for other question types, it's okay, but be careful with the summary completion or the gap fill. Okay. Next question. Oh, I can't. Oh, I have just two more. Okay. Um, I always achieve 5.5 to 6 reading. I think if, if you need to improve more, you need to read more. You need to read more English every day on normal topics. That's the best way. Just like the speaking test, to improve, you need to speak more, okay? Uh, same answer for you, Lena Chen, okay? You need to read more English every day, okay? That is honestly the best way to improve. Okay, guys, uh, I have to move to the um, listening um, workshop now, okay? Because I only have uh, 30 minutes left. However, this workshop is shorter, okay? There are less tips I can give. Um, however, before I start, the biggest tip I can give you for listening is to listen more, okay? Now, how can you do this? Well, YouTube, movies, Netflix are very useful. However, without subtitles, okay? Uh, when you have subtitles, um, I can't remember the Vietnamese, is it Phuc De? Um, could be wrong about that. Maybe it's Chute. Maybe it's Chute. I can't remember. But when you have subtitles, uh, you are reading. Maybe someone can tell me in the in the chat um, the Vietnamese word for subtitles. Ah, Phu De. Okay, thank you very much. Phu De. Oh, come on. Um, yeah, when you use subtitles, guys, um, you are reading. Okay. Yes, you're listening a bit, and that can help. Um, so here's my tip. Um, if you watch a movie, for the first time, use the English subtitles, okay? Then, if you like the movie, okay, or if you don't like it, one week later or a few days later, watch the movie again without subtitles. You know the story, you know what happens, but your ears will do all the work, okay? So that's, that's a good tip for um, improving your listening. But like the reading and like the speaking, Practice makes perfect. Okay, let's take a look at um, the uh, listening test. Now, guys, something you must know is section one has two speakers. Section two only has one speaker, mono. Mono means one. Section three has usually two or three people, or maybe four sometimes. And section four has only one person. Remember that. Section two and four, only one person will be speaking, okay? Okay, so uh, a few things that you need to be aware of. Uh, remember, the recording is only played once. Usually you have some time before each section uh, to read the questions. However, um, only one section gives you um, some time in uh, the beginning only. Section four will give you some time at the start, but no break in the center. There's a break of about two seconds, three seconds. 
after question um, 34 usually. Okay, read the instructions carefully. Um, remember that a date or a number is one word. A hyphenated word, okay, a word with this in the center, that is still one word. A compound word like football player, which has no symbol here, is two words, okay? Spelling is important. Oh, you're telling me my presentation is still reading slides. Oh, okay. Thank you for letting me know. Let me fix that for you. Let me uh, close the reading slides. Not sure why that happened. Okay. Let's try that again. Okay, mọi người, can you xác nhận có presentation uh, in nghe bây giờ? Do I have the uh, Do I have the uh, listening presentation now? Can you see that? Okay. Come on, come on, mọi người. Thank you, guys. Okay, guys. Um, so yeah, I was just giving you some general uh, tips. Okay, just be careful with this symbol. If there is two words connected with this symbol. That is one word, okay? But without this symbol, it's two words, like football player, okay? Um, sometimes there are quite long uh, gaps between answers. That's okay. Or sometimes two or three answers will come very quickly. So be aware. Also, guys, sometimes the answer for question one will come quite quickly after the recording starts. So you must be ready. Don't be chilling at the start, okay? Um, vấn đề rất là thỏ ở Việt Nam. Um, something uh, very common um, and a, a, a problem in Vietnam is the, the so nhiều, okay, the plural. Uh, dog and dogs are not the same, okay? Test Exam taker and exam takers are different. So be very careful with plurals, okay? Also, guys, remember that um, sometimes they change the answer, especially in part one. They say, what is your address? Bizu, what is your address? My address is 75 Main Street. Oh, actually, no, 73 Main Street. Sometimes they change that information, okay? Um, the key in the um, listening test is focus, okay? It is quite difficult to focus for 20 or 30 minutes on, on um, audio, okay? 20 minutes of audio focus is difficult. So practicing the listening test helps us improve our focus, our concentration, okay? Let's take a look at some uh, question types. Now, with multiple choice, often you will hear all the options that you are given, okay? Um, so don't jump too quickly uh, to uh, one option, okay? Uh, often the options are quite similar. And of course, the there will be paraphrasing, okay? There will be paraphrasing, there will be synonyms. So don't um, just look for keywords. We are matching meaning. Like the reading test, we are matching meaning, not words. Um, this question causes a lot of problems for people, um, the map label, okay? Um, so when we're doing a question like this, of course, look at the word limit. Um, Usually prepositions are very important here. Below, above, beside, behind, next to, opposite, okay? These are key words for this kind of uh, exercise. Also, guys, look at the um, map before you start, okay? Always find out where you are at the start, you are here, okay? Then look at the um, order of the letters. 
The questions will may not follow this order, okay? Questions may not follow this order, but usually the recording will, okay? Also, guys, on each um, map, every word that's given, like penguins, lake, main building, all those words are important, okay? Those words will be used in the tape, in the recording. So study um, where you are, the where the numbers or letters are, and all the words, okay? Also, adverbs of location um, are also important. Like I said, um, things like north, south, east, west, north of, south of. Now, you have to know this, guys. Um, Visu, Haifam city is of Hanoi. Tell me in the chat box. Haifam city is of Hanoi. Haifam, do you know your um, Dili, Vietnam? Dili, uh, that knows Vietnam. Thang Le says east. So Haifam city is of Oh, so is it north, south, east, or west? Haifam city is of Hanoi. East of. Let's try this one. Ho Chi Minh city is of Da Nang. Ho Chi Minh city is of Da Nang. So is it north, south, east, or west? Very good, guys. So just be careful with that. No, no, Ho Chi Minh City is south of Da Nang. That means below, okay? Um, for these other types of questions, guys, um, just be careful with the grammar. When you're doing a gap fill, think about, like the reading test, think about what kind of word you need. Is it a noun? Is it a verb, adjective, or adverb? Okay, so check the grammar and the spelling and the word count when you are transferring your answers. Check these things. Do the words fit? You have 10 minutes to transfer. It's quite a long time. Okay. Now, um, here's something that's quite useful. Okay. So, the quá. Signposting language. Um, what is this? Now, when we are in the city, like in Hanoi, and I need to find out what street am I on? Where am I? Usually I look at the sign on the street and it tells me Kim Ma Street or uh, Le Van Leung Street. I can see the sign and that tells me where I am and where I need to go. And there is a way of doing this in the test, okay? Especially in section three and four, when it's quite difficult, and especially section four, which is very long. Um, if you are lost in the recording, it's very difficult to find the answer. You need to know what question you're doing. Where am I? What question am I on? Okay. How can we do that? Well, let me show you. Here's a table. Okay. A gap fill. Okay. Gap fill table. Um, let's look at question 22. Okay. Well, we look at this time of day, changes in number of people and mm. first of all, what kind of word do you think will be here? What kind of word do you think we need here? Tell me in the chat. Very good. It, of course, is a noun. Could be um, a plural noun. Yeah. Anyway, look at 22. Now, here it says visitor numbers overall number of visitors this is not part of our question however it's very important that we are listening for these words or paraphrases of these words synonyms why because then when we hear this 
And when we hear this, visitor numbers, overall number, we know that question 22 is very close. Also, <coughs> excuse me, words like this, floating rubbish, boat pollution, garbage, trash, ship, okay? These are not part of a question, but they're helping us know where we are in the question, okay? So we know our location. We know when question 24 is coming. So don't forget to follow all the words in the questions, in the table, in the multiple choice. Follow all the words. They can help you know where you are, okay? Now, um, why do I have this here? Well, I want to show you guys something. If you miss one question, just like in the reading test, it's very important. Don't panic. Don't stress. Just forget it. It's finished. Okay, it's over. It's finished. It's too late. Keep your focus. You can get 10 questions wrong. You see here? 30 to 31 and still get an amazing score seven is very high or you can get 17 questions wrong almost half and still score six which is a fantastic score it's a great score okay so if you miss a question stay calm okay stay cool relax keep your focus if you lose your focus you will lose your place you will lose the location of the answer, okay? All right, let's take a look at some um, Five top tips, tips to improve your IELTS listening score. If you're preparing for your IELTS listening Now, can you hear this lady uh, clearly, guys? Oh, sorry, okay. Sorry for my Vietnamese pronunciation, but I love to practice. That's how we improve, okay to improve your IELTS listening score. If you're preparing for your IELTS listening test, here are some simple tweaks you can make to your preparation and test technique that will make a big difference to your score. Get used to a range of accents. You've probably had friends and teachers to a range of accents. Oh guys, accent là giọng địa phương, like a local sound. Like you have giọng miền Nam, giọng miền Bắc, miền Trung. You've probably had friends and teachers recommend you listen to English radio to help you prepare for your IELTS listening test. That's great advice. To really maximize the benefit, you should listen to as many different accents as you can. Try listening to British, American, Canadian, and Australian radio. IELTS is an international English test, and you'll hear all of these accents in the test. Check out Australian Broadcasting Corporation, PBS, and BBC. Read the instructions carefully. It's so simple, but when you're in an actual test situation, it can be easy to overlook. Try reading the question through twice to make sure you don't miss any important points. Here's an example. If the question says, write no more than three words, and you write four words, you would not get points for giving more than what is asked. In fact, your answers will be marked as incorrect because you didn't follow the instructions. Take a little extra time to read carefully and you can avoid wasting valuable marks. Don't leave any blanks. Don't leave any gaps on your answer sheet. Make sure you provide answers for every question, even if you have to make a guess. You won't lose marks for incorrect answers and you might just surprise yourself by getting some correct. Look ahead. Read the questions that are coming up and think about what the question might be about. You can probably predict some key words that you need to listen for, even if you're not a fortune teller. Now remember, what you hear might not be exactly the same as what's written on the exam paper. So listen out for different words that mean the same thing, like car and automobile. These are called synonyms. The more you practice, the better. Improve your listening by finding ways to listen to English every day. The more you listen, the faster your understanding will improve and the better you'll be at picking out answers in your test. Remember, keep positive and keep practicing and you will see improvement. Now it's your turn. Okay, good tips. Um, now guys, very quickly, I, I'm going to give you some common mistakes that people make. Um, 
sometimes people um, don't um, use the time before uh, the recording starts. You, you, you need to use all the time you have. Now, at the end of part one, for example, um, it says that is the end of part one. You now have 30 seconds to check your answers. If you are happy with your answers, move to part two and look at the um, question. If you're happy with your answers, use all the time you have. Um, like I said before, if you miss a question, it's okay. Come cause If to relax, stay focused. Okay, you can take a guess later. Um, remember that the distractors will be there. Just because you hear a word that's in the options for multiple choice does not mean it's correct. The meaning is what we're interested in. Now, this one, if you're doing the um, paper test, um, some students, for some reason, I don't know why, but they, they like to write the answers on the answer sheet while they're listening. Right? Don't, don't do that. Okay. Um, focus only on the listening. Um, don't write on the answer sheet. Um, before the end of the test, okay? You don't need to do that. Um, also guys, like I said, you, you um, maybe you want to get 40, maybe you want to get 30 or 20, it doesn't matter, but just be realistic, okay? Uh, about your, about your, your goals, okay? Don't be too hard on yourself. Um, when you practice, if you practice um, the listening test at home, you can listen to it more than one time, okay? You can give yourself more time to read the questions. Think about the grammar. Think about the um, type of word you need. Think about the answer, predict the answer. There's no rush, no hurry, okay, at home. Then, like the reading test, later, you can practice on the time, one time only, okay? Don't forget to predict answers. Uh, this one is quite important. Um, Visu, if I go to Nyaga Hanoi, right, I go to the train station and I'm listening to the Vietnamese, you know, I'm going to Ning Binh, for example, and I'm listening to the, the, the person um, telling about all the trains. I'm only interested in the train for Ningbing. That is called targeted listening. So when you practice that, it improves your uh, accuracy. Okay. We're only listening for the key information. Okay. Like the lady said, you need to listen to different accents Australian, New Zealand, um, British, Irish, like me, and uh, American. Okay. And South African also. The most common are British, uh, American, and Australian. I guess it, if I told you to focus on three, I would say British, uh, Australian, and uh, American. Okay. The Irish accent, my accent, is quite similar to British, even though we're very different because Ireland is not in the UK. Don't forget that. Um, also, guys, in part one, Often um, they will spell the answer, like, um, for example, Ireland, I R E L A N D, uh, or they will um, write phone numbers, like like um, zero three two four five six one four two five four. If you have a problem with those, there are YouTube videos where you can practice just that. They're quite easy, so you need to be careful. In Vietnam, often I hear. Um, W and X cause a lot of problems. People think they are U and S, okay? W and X, be careful with those. Um, also guys, be careful with 15 and 50, okay? okay? The stress on Muelam is 15, teen, 15. And the stress on Namwe on 50 is 50. 50, okay? 
So be careful with those. They will try and uh, confuse you with those. 50, 15, 18, 80, 19, 90. Okay. Uh, like I said before, sometimes they correct, they change their answer. They say, my address is 15 High Street. Sorry, 13 High Street. Okay. Careful with those. Um, also, um, when you're checking your answers, when you are um, transferring answers, okay, be careful with the grammar. All right, guys, we have uh, a few minutes for, oh, thank you very much, uh, Tim, for the uh, compliment about my Zom uh, thing. It's just practice. Uh, I'm still very low. My my <clears throat> my Vietnamese VINELT score is very low, maybe a three, but I'm improving. 